Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question 10 which is a 50 mark question on the circle. So we're told that the penny farthing was the first machine to be called a bicycle. It was popular in the late 1800s. So it has one small wheel at the back and then one larger wheel at the front. So then A part 1 which is worth 5 marks tells us that one particular model made in 1886 weighs 36 pounds has a 60 spoke 130 centimeter diameter front wheel and a 20 spoke 46 centimeter diameter rear wheel. So now we're asked to find the circumference of the front wheel in terms of pi. So let's go to our formula tables book now and see the formula for the circumference of the circle. So it's on page eight and it's the second and last formula on the page. So L, which is the circumference is equal to two pi or. Now two times pi times pi or is the same thing as just pi times by the diameter as two times or will be equal to the diameter. So we can rewrite that as pi times the diameter. And we're given the diameter in our question, so this will make it easier for us. So we're told here that the diameter is 130 centimeters for the front wheel. So it's going to be 130 by pi, which is just going to be 130 pi centimeters. So that's our answer for A part 1. Now let's have a look at A part 2, which is worth 10 marks. So this says that if a cyclist pedals the bicycle such that the front wheel rotates at 2 revolutions per second, calculate the speed of the cyclist in meters per second. So 1 revolution is going to be 130 pi centimeters. But we're asked for two revolutions, so it's going to be 2 by 130 pi. And the only other thing is that it's meters per second. Remember, up here we found it in centimeters. So to go from centimeters to meters, we just divide by 100. So we know that it goes 130 pi by 2 centimeters per second. However, we want it in meters per second, so that's why we're dividing by 100. And 130 pi by 2 divided by 100 will give us 8.16814 meters per second which to two decimal places is equal to 8.17 meters per second. So that's my answer for A part two. And now let's have a look at A part three, which is worth five marks. So here we're told that the rear wheel travels at the same speed as the rest of the bike, but it rotates faster. So now we have to find, correct to two decimal places, the number of revolutions per second at which the rear wheel rotates. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work out the circumference. And remember from A part one, that the circumference is gonna be equal to pi times pi the diameter. So in this case, it will be 46 pi centimeters. So we need to find out how many revolutions it will take so that it's going at 8.17 meters per second. So once again, we're gonna divide it by 100 as this unit here is in centimeters. And we're gonna multiply that by X with X being the number of revolutions. And you want that to be equal to 8.17 meters per second. So it looks something like that. And now we're gonna solve for X. So first of all, I'm gonna multiply both sides by 100 to get rid of the 100 on the bottom of the fraction on the left-hand side. So the 100 will cancel with the 100. And then 8.17 by 100 is gonna be 817. So we get 46 pi by X is equal to 817. And now dividing both sides by 46 pi, and we get X is equal to 817 over 46 pi. So evaluating that, we get 5.6534637, but correct to two decimal places, that's gonna be 5.65 revolutions per second. So that's our answer for A part three. Now let's have a look at part B of the question. So part B tells us that there's a penny farthing with a back wheel of diameter 50 centimeters standing on horizontal ground and it's leaning against a vertical wall. Their front wheel is standing against a supporting rectangular wooden block of height 30 centimeters and width 15 centimeters. So then B part one is worth 10 marks. And it says, using Pythagoras' theorem or otherwise, find the diameter of the front wheel. So I'm not gonna use Pythagoras' theorem here. We know that the wheel is in the shape of a circle and we know the general form for the equation of a circle can be given on page 19 of our formula and tables book. So let's have a look. So we're going to use this equation here. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared is equal to R squared. So center is HK and the radius is R. So let's go back and see what our center is and our radius. So both of those pink lines there are also equal to the radius. So now as the wheel is hitting both against the ground and the vertical wall, there's the same distance between the vertical wall and the center and the ground in the center. So that means the center can just be given as or or. So whatever the radius is, that's going to be the x value and the y value of the center. So we're going to say that or is equal to h and or is also equal to k. And obviously that or is also equal to or. We're going to pop these into our equation now. So that will give us x minus or squared plus y minus or squared is equal to or squared. Now we actually have a coordinate on the circle and it's this coordinate right here. As we know, it's 15 centimeters in on the ground and 30 centimeters up on the vertical wall. So that coordinate there is 15, 30. So I'm gonna say that 15 is my X coordinate and 30 is my Y coordinate. And then we can put those in for X and Y and then solve for R. So 15 minus R squared is gonna be 225 minus 30 R plus R squared. 
and then 30 minus r squared is going to be 900 minus 60 r plus r squared and that's all equal to r squared as well so now the r squared on the right will cancel with one of the r squareds on the left and then we just have one r squared on the left and then we have minus 30 or minus 60 or so both of those are like terms so that's going to give us minus 90 or and then we have 225 plus 900 which will give us 1125 and that's all equal to zero so now this is a quadratic trinomial and we can factorize it and solve for or so you can use minus p formula if you want or you can factorize this as or minus 75 by or minus 15 is equal to zero so then we get or minus 75 is equal to zero and or minus 15 is equal to zero then we get or is equal to 75 and or is equal to 15. However, we have a problem, or cannot be equal to 15, as if or was 15, then that would be below the 30 centimeter wooden block. So therefore, or can only be equal to 75 centimeters. So if the radius is 75, then we have to figure out the diameter by multiplying this by two, and 75 by two is 150 centimeters. So that's our answer for B part one. Now let's have a look at B part two, which is worth five marks. So this tells us that the distance between the two wheels along the line joining their centers is 10 centimeters as shown. So now we're asked to find the distance between the centers of the two wheels in meters. So let's have a look. So basically we need to find the distance of that yellow line there. We know that that portion there between both of the wheels is 10 centimeters. We know that this part here is going to be equal to the radius of the larger wheel. And we know that the final yellow part there is going to be the radius of the smaller wheel. So we've already worked out the radius of that larger wheel and that's 75 centimeters. We're given the distance between both the wheels, that's 10 centimeters, and we're given the diameter of the smaller wheel up here. So we're gonna have that to find the radius, which is gonna be 25. So it's 75 plus 25 plus 10, which gives 110 centimeters, but be careful, it wanted the answer in meters. So we're gonna divide by 100, which is gonna be 1.1 meters. So that's our answer for B part two. Now let's have a look at B part three, which is worth 15 marks. So this says that another rectangular block of width 10 centimeters touches both the wall and the front wheel of the bike. So we're asked to find the maximum height of the block of wood correct to the nearest centimeter. So this time we're gonna say that the X value is equal to 10 and the Y value is going to be equal to the maximum height H. And we know that the general equation of the circle of this wheel is given by X minus R squared plus Y minus R squared is equal to R squared, but we know that R is equal to 75, so therefore it's X minus 75 squared plus Y minus 75 squared is equal to 75 squared. So popping in 10 for X and H for Y, we get 10 minus 75 squared plus H minus 75 squared is equal to 5,625. You may notice that in the marking scheme, they have X is equal to 20 rather than X is equal to 10. However, this is an error and X should be equal to 10 as that's the width of the block. So 10 minus 75 gives us 65 and 65 squared is equal to 4,225. And then H minus 75 squared is equal to H squared minus 150H plus 5,625. And that's equal to 5,625. And the 5,625 on the left will cancel with the 5,625 on the right. So then we're left with h squared minus 150h plus 4,225 is equal to zero. And this is a quadratic trinomial. So we have a formula to solve these. It's the minus b formula, which you may be familiar with. But if you're not, it is in the formula and tables book. And it's on page 20. It's the very first formula on the page. Minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You may be familiar with this, but just in case you're not, it's here. So let's fill in our a, b, and c, and then find out our two values for h. So h squared is the same thing as 1 h squared. So therefore, a is equal to 1. b is minus 150. And c is 4,225. So now let's pop these into the formula. So it's minus b, and we have minus minus 150, which is plus 150, plus minus the square root of, so minus 150 squared, minus 4 by 1, by 4,225. All over 2 by 1, or just 2. So that gives us 150 plus minus the square root of 5,600 over two. So we'll do 150 plus the square root of 5,600 over two. And we'll do 150 minus the square root of 5,600 over two. So 150 plus the square root of 5,600 over two gives us 112.42 centimeters. And 150 minus the square root of 5,600 over two gives us 37.56 centimeters. However, 112.42 is not valid as it's more than the radius, which wouldn't make sense. So therefore the maximum height is equal to 37.56 centimeters and correct the nearest centimeter that's gonna be equal to 38 centimeters. So that's our answer for B part three of the question, the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.